From firefighter to a landlord with a multi-millions of dollars in revenue operating a property management business and many different horizontal and vertically integrated businesses, this is a video that you want to watch if you want to see how to go from W-2 job to becoming an investor and an entrepreneur. But also, if you're interested in where to make money in real estate, here's how Peter is figuring out how to make more money with real estate. Let's go. Welcome back to another episode of the Meet Kevin Show. Today, we have Peter of Rincon Property Management here. Now, what's amazing with Peter's story is that, and I want you to tell the story, but let's just put it this way. You went from fire captain to the best property manager I've ever seen in the world, and you're a real estate <laughs> investor, and you're a father of three. You got to fill in, fill, fill in here. How did this all start? Because it's really inspiring. It's really amazing. Wow. Yeah. I don't feel like I, I live up to all that, but, um, <laughs> so I'll give you the quick version. So we yeah, can let's talk hear about it. some other stuff, but so worked for the fire department, figured out quickly that like, you know, I needed to have an alternate income source, passive income, real Is that estate. Is just because you hit sort of a ceiling of, of like what you could make even working hour time no, or I ranking? Think, I think it had more to do with like, I've always been kind of a serial entrepreneur. Okay. And working for the government was a little challenging, right? For from the perspective of I like to do my own thing and control versus bureaucracy. Yeah, okay. and and in you know when you're young and you're like, oh, the fire department, be a firefighter, that'd be super cool, and and it was, and it was a great job, but eventually, like the the entrepreneur side of me was like, okay, this is interesting, fun. I don't know if I want to be here for thirty years doing this type of a thing. So you that made was a captain. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. Over. Yeah, I did. Which I mean, I don't knock the fire department. It's a great job, great career, great bunch of people, but just ultimately didn't suit where I was going. So personality wise, like you had to have that that entrepreneurial I, outlet. Exactly. Yeah. And, and you I were doing always, both for a while. You started your entrepreneurial side hustles while you were at the fire department. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, so tell I, me about I, that. I, the the first thing I did was I started investing in real estate, out of state real estate. Oh, where'd you buy? Nashville, Toledo. A uh, little town called Bonner Springs in Kansas. Wow. And then a, a little town in Texas called New Braunfels. And uh, how was that? I made a ton of mistakes. Yeah. So oh. <laughs> no, no, it was good. Oh, I got to hear good. about these. I mean, I, I wouldn't change it for, for a minute, but I'll back two steps up. The yeah. reason that I, so I initially bought a house here in Ventura, a new house over at Off Telephone, okay. in addition to my house that I was in, because yeah. um, it was pre-2007, right? And uh -huh. it was like, oh, you can't go wrong here. Interesting. Bought the house, rented it out to a friend, um, which is how I figured out I didn't like property management companies because I was, you know, trying they to work with suck. them. They all suck. And they're terrible, <laughs> Except <right>? yours. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, just by luck, so sold it literally right before the crash. And the reason that I sold it was... My wife was a teacher. We were having our first baby wow. and I didn't want her to have to work. I wanted her to be able to stay home and raise the kids. So I'm like, well, okay, this isn't going to work. I can't, I need to create an alternate income source if this is going to work. So that's why I sold the house in Ventura, leveraged it, over leveraged it into, I think 10 or 11 units um, in multiple markets, which was a, a mistake for sure. Oh my God. In the hopes that I would produce cash flow to to, to keep her at home or yeah. start to go down that journey. Well, sure. it was all good until the great recession hit, which literally like, as I was closing these properties, like the market was turning oh. and, uh, def I held on, I didn't like go bankrupt or, or lose it all. But I mean, it stopped me from like my forward progress wow. because I was hanging on, on the whole way down versus buying more. Like oh I compare it to a, another firefighter I know who started real estate investing right after the great recession wow. and he never stopped and he's he also has since left the fire department early but he has you know a ton of units and th just a difference in timing uh, well wow. and then that's not why he was successful and why it wasn't mm -hmm. but just two different scenarios and so anyway long story short that's what got me into real estate if was it useful to have that firefighter salary that w2 oh. to buy your real estate so absolutely it, I mean, it will. And then having the firefighter salary and starting a business yeah. is an incredible opportunity because I literally started a business that I did not rely on at all. Mm. Like whether it made money, lost money, it didn't matter. Wow. Cause I had my, I, my lifestyle was set up 
on my firefighter salary. So oh, that's it was all house money, essentially, right? And Any pro- deal you closed, so to speak, was just bonus money exactly. at your new business, which exactly. is great because I feel like sometimes you work with real estate agents and that's their only income and maybe they're newer or they're having a hard time or whatever but you can almost sometimes feel when there's like blood in the water it's like i need i I need to close this deal and when i feel like when you get into that mindset it's really hard to actually close deals like other people notice like Mm, oh no desperation they smell it on you yes where when Mm. you're in that situation you described i wonder if that actually not only makes it less stressful for you to actually start a side hustle but to actually probably makes it easier for you to succeed in that side hustle well it was a competitive advantage other people didn't have the luxury i had which is they needed to make money they maybe were desperate maybe they needed to close those deals where i didn't And then I, it allowed me also to like go undercut the market. Like I started the management company vastly priced way below my competitors, which in hindsight, I don't think was the best idea, but it it is what it is. But I was able to do that only because I didn't need to make money in the beginning. Right. Which is not normal. Like that's not how most businesses start or, or, you know, small entrepreneurial hustler type businesses. So yeah, no kidding. You're usually trying to get every penny together just to survive in the business. Just to pay rent or mortgage or whatever. So that's so yeah, that was. In 2012 or 14. I'm That's when you started your fun. management business. That's when I started the management Why business. Why not real estate sales? I didn't know anything about I mean, I was young and dumb and had no idea really. what. Like, I don't know. Like, I don't have a good answer. Do you think in hindsight you would have gone sales and management maybe? Or just or you like management? So part of the strategy with management only was yeah. to entice realtors to refer to their clients to us. This Did that a, work? Yes and no. Okay. This is a hotly debated thing in the property management industry. Like, yeah, yeah. you should have sales. You shouldn't have sales. It depends right. on where your clients are coming from. I think, I think if I had to do it all over again, I probably would have done sales sooner. Mm. And and sales is possibly on the horizon in the future. I just nice. currently don't do it now. We have referral partners, and like, if I go start selling, I'm basically going to blow up those relationships, kind right. of. Right. Which but there's as, the risk of that at least. Yeah. yeah or okay. the yeah, if you don't delicately like maneuver the best way. Yeah. I mean, you know, you were in the business, yeah. Pe- people, property management companies steal listings from realtors. Well, of course. All I mean, the, the, s- the seller just by default is dealing with the yeah. manager all the time. And so when they need to sell, the first thing is, when's that lease up? Yeah. Oh, why are you asking? Oh, thinking about selling. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? exactly. Why don't I help you with that? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, but then, then you wonder, uh, is that, is that also, strategically a, a, a you know a 10x revenue opportunity i don't know so the argument in the industry is yeah, yeah. you're foolish for not selling so you can mm. still keep your integrity and protect your referral relationships don't take those listings right. but you're giving up so much money yeah by not selling sure so, because i mean if if you make you know 150 bucks a month on on a property uh for property management you've got to manage the thing for like 10 to 15 years to mm. compare to a commission check yeah and then, I mean, we there's still we get a referral fee, but it's not yeah. the same. So then I was negotiating like better referral fees that I could pull off, which was helping. Yeah. Um. So I guess it it depends. Yeah, it it's just depends. it yeah, the, the reality is is like where are you going to focus your efforts in your business? You yeah. can't do it all. Yeah. You have, exactly. and then you just like laser focus on something <laughs> until, until you wire it and then go to the next thing and the next thing. And oh, that's an interesting phrase until you wire it. So do you feel like you've wired your property management business? So the property management business, I don't want to say runs completely on its own, but yeah. I almost feel like I'm not needed there most wow. of the time. Right. So like we have a leadership team, we have how many people do you have now? 13? Yeah. 13, 13 and half of them are remote. How many properties are you managing? It's coming up on 400. Wow. I remember Back when it was you and one person in mm-hmm. that old that Remax little, office. Yeah, in that little closet the, office yeah. that we had. Yeah. I mean, it was like 80 square feet. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> well, that's amazing, <laughs> My though. My closet was bigger. That, because uh, that's actually so cool. Like, that's that's so inspiring. Because, like, here, more Camp Fire Department, you're starting. You start small. Uh, hire one person. You, you grew it to 13 people and 400 properties. Yeah, and th- so, I mean, my other strategy is... Well, let me back to your question. Yeah. The the management company is dialed. There's workflows and automation and processes and AI. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> we have sales, marketing. We have all the functions of a business and it pretty much runs like a top. Like doesn't uh-huh. mean there's not problems occasionally. There sure. for sure are, but it doesn't take all my attention. My strategy now, it, I'm 
basically vertically integrating all the other businesses that surround property management. Ooh, so what else? Two years ago, we started a contracting company. No. Which I know you had a rough, <laughs> rough go with. <laughs> no. Okay. You have to tell me about this. Yeah. So it's called Quick Turn Maintenance. It's a licensed, oh, no. <laughs> licensed contractor. Uh, we have two uh, on staff handyman technicians, yeah. and then we sub out the stuff that we don't do. Is this for your property management? Correct. Yeah. Are you doing remodels for other people? Not currently. Okay. Yeah. That's that's the danger spot. <laughs> yeah. So so we so the contracting business survives on our portfolio that we already manage, yeah, which yeah, essentially yeah. we are the only customer of the contracting business. But see, that's business. great. That is actually a very delicious style of like contracting. Because <laughs> now you can do you could have uh, the correct workers comp, you could have the correct insurances, the general liability insurances, you could pull the permits when you need them, you could do the work you need to do. Finding great handy folks, that's hard. So having that is a good edge. Yeah. And they, I mean, it's all about control, right? Construction yeah. people are, they're difficult. It's a different breed of people, oh, yeah. as you know. Um, so that, so we're doing that. And it, it's funny you say that because like we've, again, for like the first two years worked out our systems and processes made sure we had it all kind of figured out yeah i am anticipating turning around and facing the public yes yeah not that. like joe homeowner who wants to call to have his toilet fixed but more like other property management companies or our realtor referral partners that we potentially could do some work for so Don't you're shaking it. your head Don't do let's it. hear it Don't let's hear it. it let's hear it if you're going to go <clears throat> to in my opinion the the like oh we'll do this remodel for you you got to go expensive. So we're not cheap. We're actually really expensive. Yeah. But I don't think then you're going to get like the realtors and the maintenance people who want to hire you. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. That would be the, the risk there because you know how it is with realtors. They, if it's not done today, they're pissed at you. And that that's that's almost more risky for Brandy, in my opinion. Could be wrong here. But I think if you can, if you, you know, have a, a you know, sort of a briefcase contract thing where, <laughs> where you become this, hey, well, we'll do your... $80,000 kitchen and bathroom remodel. Mm -hmm. There's so much extra margin in there that you could sub stuff out. A lot of stuff, you could sub it out, have your people fill in or coordinate the job. That's where you can make extra money. Going doing a, you know, the maintenance for the realtors, that makes me nervous. You mean like little, like here's the two, three item punch list and it needs to be done in two hours. Is that what you're referring to? I mean like, to? What, yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess are you tr can, trying to create it as a loss leader to get them to use you for property no, management? No, 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 no. So couple things when we say we're, we're not doing like like if you called and said hey i want a brand new kitchen yeah right, we would say no right because like, right now you're maintenance right we're doing your own rental <laughs> yeah. well even if we were facing the public i'm yeah. not going to like build houses or additions or major remodels we're right. doing rental flips right yeah. we're yeah, doing yeah, yeah. floors paint yeah, yeah yeah countertops light fixtures plumbing fixtures yeah the easy the stuff that you preach about on your youtube mm -hmm. channel back in the day that's all Great. we're doing Perfect. so I'm not getting out of like, I don't want to step outside of that because I don't know that. Like, I'm not an expert in Good. that. I'll, yeah. I'll get eaten for lunch for sure if I go against That's the thing. some contractor that does full remodels every day. Like, yep. no interest in that. We're going to do basically what we do on our properties okay. for other landlords and rent and, and management companies. I wonder or if you can make money in that. <clears throat> These people are so fussy. I would be just very cautious. That's all mm -hmm. I would say because they, it's, it's so amazing because on one hand, when when you do a rental renovation for one of your landlords and you're like, look, it was a hoarder house. It was a disaster. It was a you know, horrible tenant or whatever. They come to you. They're like, I need a professional to do this. And then you go do the rental grade renovation. And then they go in. It's like, oh, my gosh, the transformation. It was this inexpensive. This is great. Uh, that, I think, is such a wonderful thing when they're your clients and you have the full control. You're mm -hmm. making all the decisions. What drove me nuts was as soon as it went from I'm making the decisions to somebody else's like, well, I think the rental needs brass hardware instead, and it's my rental, and I'm managing it, right? That that yeah. was the hard part. I have to. We'll have to figure that yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, yeah. Come across a lot of that because okay. we're mainly just taking care of our own right now. But, yes, and uh, that is great. Like I'm so happy to hear that. Yeah, you have your own control, <laughs> control and construction. Fantastic. Oh, it controls everything. Oh my gosh. Even I mean, we I do I, I am doing the construction stuff to make a profit, but yes, there are yeah. plenty of people who in the industry who don't they just do it to control the process. Oh, and yeah. they break even on it and they're happy with that. Are, are you are you positive on it? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah. I mean, oh, we're not making a ton of money. Like no. we we have a, a lot of but room even if for you're making ten bucks an hour on on the guys that you're hiring. Now you have a a 
part you have a this subsidiary business that basically makes all of your other management business way easier mm -hmm. like your job intention and in, intensity just plummeted and this is why why we have you know in-house uh, uh contracting uh for contractors as well because you can't do it without having i feel like some people on payroll that could just go do that one freaking light fixture well, and i need and, it done today yeah, you know it, it's hard <laughs> to have leverage over these subs if you're not like especially if you don't give them a ton of work. Like exactly. our main yeah. subs, I feel like we have leverage over, but yep. push comes to shove. I can't tell them what to do. Of course. Our own internal people, totally Smart. different. And, so. that's, and, and if you can get that for free, because basically you're you're charging a you know small premium for the the people that are uh, you know uh, essentially your your clients your mm -hmm. landlord clients that's fantastic it's better for them it lets you keep your management costs more effective it it runs the business smoothly I love that yeah it's yeah. a good idea so that so that that's okay. two years old I'm rolling out another company oh let's so hear so basically it. I'm using the the management company as like this economic engine hell yeah and we <laughs> I, I mean, love this the the best part about I, I would say this. Owning real estate is is number one. If you can own the real estate, that's the best thing. Okay. The second best thing is controlling the real estate, right? <laughs> yes, so I love this. <laughs> the management company essentially controls all the properties we manage. Of course. We pick what vendors go there. We pick what insurance the tenants get. We pick all the things we control. So oh, you pick the tenants insurance. This video is brought to you by Househack, my real estate startup. Go to househack.com to learn more, read the offering circular. It is a real estate investment company that is raising money between now and November 1st, 2023 for the 2023 fundraise. Learn more about what we're doing, how we hope to make cash flow and grow the business, all of the fantastic things that we're doing with this company. Go to househack.com to learn more and how you can invest with a credit card, debit card, ACH, whatever is most convenient for you. We have a master renters policy, a master policy. So in theory, we can't like make them take it, right. but probably 80% of them take it. Because we make it- A master renters policy. Yeah. Oh, tell me about that. So we actually, it's wrapped up in this, what we call a resident benefit package, which is I've like- I've seen a, you sell that. Yeah, <laughs> okay, which is okay. like a suite of stuff, but everyone, no one, every landlord says the same thing. You can't live in my property without renters insurance, right? That's like- Sure. Com, like base- I don't know what I'm trying to say, but it's it's like everybody the requires everybody it. Yeah, bare it. minimum. Yeah. The reality is, though, people will buy the policy to move in because they know they have to, yeah. and then no landlord does any kind of compliance around it. Right. Of they could cancel the policy. No one ever knows. Mm -hmm. Not a whatever. So we that's bad. That's yeah, bad for the landlord. Bad for the management company. Here's my certification. Cancel the next month. Yeah. So and the and most of the policies that they're buying are garbage. Oh, so yeah. we have a master renters policy that actually has better coverage. So I think our like uh, personal property coverage is $30,000, which okay. uh, anyway, long story short, we control the process. Yeah. If you say, hey, I don't want your master policy. I'm going to use my own. We go, great. And this is all done by a third party, by the way. You here's the here's the email that you have to send your policy to. You need to add this these people as uh, additional interest. And that uh, this company basically does all the compliance. So anytime somebody mm. drops their policy, we're notified and we automatically enroll them in the master policy. And that's how we keep our people. We have keep our our clients protected. How much drop off do you see when people have their own? Is it just all the time people are dropping out of compliance, basically? No. Well, now that they know we're monitoring it, uh, I would say it doesn't happen that often. Okay, but prior okay. to that, you have no way of knowing. We had a we had a, a structure fire in a house, which mm -hmm. thank back when I was at the fire department, thankfully I wasn't working because it would have been in our area, which would have been really weird for that would be a little awkward. <laughs> would be I manage awkward. this property, guys, yeah. a little faster, please. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, structure fire. They had a candle. They burned up the like the living room, the kitchen, like pretty serious Is fire. It always candles. Not I have most a lot of the time. Candles are food on the stove. Fireplaces, food on the stove. Yeah, or they just forget it's cooking. Forget it, or they're like deep frying something and they don't. They, it overflows and starts a fire and they can't figure out how to put it out. But oh, anyway, wow. we burned they, these tents. Burned up this house and uh, they we had the renters insurance and most renters insurance policies come with like a hundred thousand dollar liability portion of it that protects the landlord. Right. So basically, the that it was. It was under a hundred thousand dollars, but the owner didn't wasn't out of pocket anything. Didn't have to pay deductible. Nothing. And they got a brand new house. And they got a brand new house. So, see, isn't that great? It's isn't insurance great. 
It is when it pay, when they pay for sure. Yeah, when like, they pay. I mean, it's I got a fight. love hate with in relationship. I mean, with everybody insurance. does. Like when they pay, it's like phenomenal. Yeah. Like I had a I had a sewer backed up, and it like it it, it basically. It, I mean, we had to uh, completely gut a bathroom and and replace the sewer under the bathroom and basically redo the entire bathroom that was just remodeled. Uh, but the because the sewer backed up and caused drywall damage, they covered everything. Nice. So I got a brand spanking new bathroom nice. and the sewer repair yeah. for like. Two grand deductible. Well, I mean, a perfect example is all those homes we burned down in Thomas Fire. Like, oh my gosh, they're gorgeous long, now. As long as nobody died, yeah, that was possibly the best thing that could have ever happen. Which to those I don't people. think any homeowner died. No, there uh -uh. was one, we, which is horrible. There's a firefighter. We killed that died. a firefighter. Uh, it's terrible. Iverson out in Fillmore, and that wasn't in a house. That was out in. It was the out woods in, the, in the woods. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, but other than that. All of those folks, I mean, some were woefully underinsured. Sure. But these are like mansions now. They're oh, they gorgeous. came out ahead. They oh, absolutely yeah. came out ahead. It's crazy. For sure. Wow. Anyway, I do want your opinion. So, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Back to this insurance. Uh, well, we can move off that oh, unless okay, you want to keep yeah. talking okay. about that. Oh, your um, property, your structure here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so we I'm got quick term maintenance. These, yeah. And We've then, got resident benefit package. What else is in that? Oh, the benefit package? Yeah. Doesn't that have like filter changes too? It does. Yeah. We'll <laughs> ship the filters. <laughs> and quick term to your maintenance house. does that? No, so okay. that's that's run by a third party. Another uh, third party. Well, so the third party like manages that res resident benefit package for us, essentially. Oh, the whole package. Almost. Why don't you do it? I did originally. Really? And uh, we could. They could do it better. No and way. For, and uh, we make more having them do it. Can you shout that company out? Second Nature. Second Nature. Yeah, okay. look them up. They only work with professional property management companies, but they manage these resident benefit package essentially it's a suite of services that it's like a concierge for tenants so that whole wow. thing like we take care of our tenants we treat them really well this is right in line with that like wow. there's a concierge utility transfer service that they call one number and it transfers all their utilities like this company will chase down all the nonsense when it comes oh, to that there's that's such a hassle rewards for like paying your rent on time there's you know we'll more options for move-ins like if you want to move in with a lockbox at seven o'clock at night on a Saturday, we can make that happen for you. Like wow. things like that. Anyway, back to this model. The next company that I'm currently in the process of spinning off is a cleaning company, which obviously cleaning, very unsexy. You like, have a cleaning company right now. So it's- And you're going to spin a, it off? It's a DBA of my contracting yeah. company currently, but the, the goal is eventually to spin it off and have it independent. Uh -huh. So it's cleaning our properties, which is like the easy, that's nothing exciting about that. But where I'm, what I'm, doing with it is and this is where i'm interested in your opinion yeah. is getting into the short-term space yeah so not, i, mean, every <laughs> I clean, knew where every, this was going <laughs> every, every cleaner wants to do airbnb cleanings right because it's obvious it's there's a lot of them they happen over and over and it's repeat the guests pay it's, the bill i feel like the best type of of uh cleaning gig is not that gig where they call you once a year and it's like to clean it's like I'll be here for five minutes on this one spot, you know? <laughs> like the best kind of clean is you're there every week or twice a week and yes. it's like, clean. <laughs> you know? Yes, so that's, but that's not the, uh, that's in my mind, not where the opportunity is. So oh. it, it, what what is a professional short-term management company charge? Oh Any my idea? gosh, 30, 40%. Okay, a yeah. lot, right? Yeah, like, yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> let's just call it 30%. Yeah. And if you're out of the area, Oh, 50. <laughs> no, yeah. Well, I mean, if you're out of the area, you don't really have a choice. Like yeah, you either yeah, yeah, yeah. you either married to your phone and having to chase down all these vendors. It's a job. It's a job. People right? forget that short term rentals are a job. You know, I see that, like on social media, it's so common. People are like, oh, I make two hundred thousand dollars from social media for from uh, short term rentals. It's like, OK, we well, are working 90 hours a week yeah. <laughs> being yeah. a concierge. Yeah. So if you don't want a job, yeah. but you yeah. still want to have a short term rental, you yeah. have to put a management company in place who's going to take 30 or 40 percent of the revenue. Right. right? What I am going to do is bundle up the services we already do, mm -hmm. handyman, mm -hmm. inspections, cleanings. Wait, you have an inspection service? No, or no, is no, that no, a just, part of handyman? It's part of okay, what okay, we okay. already do. Mm -hmm. uh, and make this into a subscription model Ooh. and market it to short-term rental owners. So Ooh. I'm going to allow them to fire their management company. Oh, you evil bastard! So, <laughs> so they can fire their management company. They can. It's a hundred bucks a month, and that yeah. doesn't come with it. That just belongs yeah, yeah. to our little conglomerate of services that we're going to offer you. Yes, you still pay for the cleaning. You still pay for the, the, the maintenance, all the stuff. But you get but access for a hundred dollars a month. Yeah, you have one point of contact, oh. which is my company. Yes, we do all of the boots on the ground. I'll see. That's so nice. you can live wherever you live and have mm -hmm. your short term rental on the beach. 
fire your management company, then the only thing you have to do is manage the guest experience, which there's a ton of software that makes that a lot easier. Interesting. So what are that, your favorites? As far as the software is? Yeah. I don't, I don't actually have any. Not at this point. Got yeah. it. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. It's a developing idea. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, that's okay. Well, so no, I mean, I'm, I'm probably about a month away from rolling this out to short term people. Oh, wow. People. I already, the cleaning company already is cleaning properties. How many people do you have in your cleaning biz? None. We, so oh. the, yeah, I mean, it's other than the people on my team already, uh -huh. there's no like, I don't even have a full time cleaner oh, wow. employee, but it's okay. I have all these subs that, do oh, all you the just cleaning. sub it out for now. For now, <laughs> people that we have relationships with yeah, yeah, already yeah. at the at the management company, wow. right? So I'm literally rebundling services we already provide, yeah, exactly, and offering it to. It's not going to be for every short term rental owner, no, but no, no, the no. ones that have a real like be in their bonnet about paying forty percent of their money to a management mm, company, yeah. who then the management company does a terrible job, of course, yeah, who they can then solely focus on making that guest experience good, getting the reviews, all the things that you got to do. Right, to it's, own you're, a successful you're removing one. all the pain, is what you're doing. Yeah. Well, a lot of the pain. They they could deal with the customers, is what you're saying. Yep. But you're gonna deal with the cleaning, the maintenance, and and the property. Basically. The the hard stuff if you're not in it in it yeah oh that's is, really interesting uh how what are you seeing are you still seeing people buy short-term rentals it, it seems like things have slowed down no no, a lot. no. i feel like short-term rentals are they're they're in trouble not trouble but they're yeah. not the same as they were no uh, no <laughs> it's not 2021 anymore yeah, eh? <laughs> yeah in fact um I, I was talking to someone the other day the city of ventura is starting to enforce some of their short-term rental regulations like they are, they've had the law uh -huh. for years I don't know how many years. They never enforce it. They never stuff. enforce yeah. it. Yeah. Well, they're starting to enforce it. Oh, which, darn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which is, you know, going to hurt some people more of than course. likely. Because um, there's a lot of people who are doing them illegally. Oh, my right? gosh. Are they going to sell? <clears throat> is, are, are, I don't know. Like, so we're, we're targeting those people who potentially are going to go, okay, yeah, this ain't worth it. I'll rent it out long term. Right. So that's an opportunity for the management company. But yeah, it's not like it was, and you're probably. I've seen some of your stuff. You're you're more in tune to that than than. Well, I, am. I mean, who knows, right? Uh, the uh, the end of it all. It it, it <clears throat> seems like. Uh, as I'm traveling around, I'm seeing a lot of listings come up. I mean, this could just be based on just what I'm seeing, but there are a lot of people who are like, uh, why are they selling? Oh, uh, short-term rentals got banned out here. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you're seeing these listings come on the market. I'm like, oh, that's not good. <laughs> well, I actually have a story. So. Yeah. We were in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho a year or two ago. I was just there like a month and a half ago. Oh, really? So yeah. my wife fell in love with the area. Oh, wow. And my yeah. one of my good friends. It's beautiful. One of my good friends has like a second house there. So we're so we're all in on the area. On the right? lake? Over, or they have like the little rivers? They're on streams. Post Falls, close Post, to the, yeah, the okay. Spokane River, yeah. um, which is the town right next to Coeur d'Alene. Yep. She falls in love. She's like, I want to be here. We yeah, that's a, closer we to Washington. A, yeah, 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 yeah. We yeah. need a place here. Like, I'm like, okay, yeah, this sounds interesting. Like, Start looking around. Oh, I mean, it's a destination for that area, right? Uh -huh. Like, okay, I'll let's buy a place, and when we're not yeah. using it, we'll short-term rental. Yeah, because people come over from Spokane and even just vacation. Yeah, right? and uh, so I start, you know, get on Air DNA, start doing all my <laughs> due diligence research. They're I'm like, expensive man. I like <laughs> this is something's not right here. Like, I can make this thing work tomorrow. Like, it would even cash flow with us using it part of the time. No. So I'm like, <laughs> okay, all right, let's start making some some lowball offers, right? Because yeah, yeah. I mean, Idaho is like, you know, it's where everybody went during, during the pandemic, and now COVID. it's where everybody's <laughs> leaving. So like, I'm like, we'll start lowballing these people, see what happens. So w got one offer, got an offer accepted, and I'm like, okay, all right, I, let's I'll keep doing some research. Like I'm like, why did they accept my offer anyway? <laughs> yeah, I know, dude. It's so funny. You just said that that line right there is so a real a real estate professional. When when you write an offer and then they take it, you're like. I overpaid. <laughs> or something's wrong, right? Yeah, yeah, wait a minute. Some. I was not supposed to get that. <laughs> anyway, so I start digging in more because yeah. honestly, I didn't expect it to happen so fast, right? Yeah. Start digging in more, end up connecting with this lady who owns a property, a short term proper short term management company. Mm. I go, hey, I just want your gut opinion here. This is what I'm doing. This is what all the data is telling me. It doesn't seem right. Right. She goes, it's COVID data. It hasn't flushed through the system. She goes, take what you're seeing, cut it in half. Oh. And that's what your real experience is going to be. And right then I was like, okay, enough said. So then she gave me the background, like, which is to your point, pre COVID, there was like 350 short term rentals in that whole area mm. blew up to like 1200. Oh, four X. 
Now, nobody wants to go there anymore because everywhere is open. But prior to that, no one was open and people were flocking to Idaho and yeah. all the red states, right? So it needs the supply and demand thing needs to shake out. So I pulled out of escrow and I go, we're going to sit back and wait and see what happens. Uh, now, now as I'm monitoring it, there's all kinds of turnkey short-term yep. rentals that are available for sale. Oh, yeah. These people are just getting hammered because oh, yeah. there's too many of them and people aren't coming. Well, and so. what's interesting is, this sounds crazy, maybe, but I think it'll it'll sound right on to you, maybe. But a turnkey short-term rental that we have on Airbnb or that people put on Airbnb and then you go visit it is not like in usually a saleable condition. <laughs> like, I've found that a lot of these are really like they photograph really well, mm -hmm. but they're really crusty. Oh, they're janky <laughs> and a bunch of wear and tear. And yeah. yeah. Yeah, I agree completely. So like I feel like you almost have to – I don't want to say re-renovate, but like go in and renovate some of the renovated short-term rentals to make them saleable. Yeah. I mean, and then you're, it depends on like who you're catering to. Like if it, yeah. like there, you got some of these that look like, uh, you know, there's every square inch has something there and they're like not modern and they're like, look like your grandma. That too. Did that. <laughs> so I don't know. Anyway, but you guys are looking at that area or with the house hacking? Yeah. Or? So we've. We've done so much traveling over this year, and uh, I mean, from from East Coast, West Coast, we've we've been everywhere. And uh, the one place that I was most nervous about uh, was Oregon, followed by Idaho, because those markets were falling this summer while all the other markets were still booming. Mm -hmm. So you go to Oregon, and everything's like. That looks like it should be a good deal. The comps are here. You know, this one's for sale for here. That should be a good deal. But that just kept happening. So we, we, we never ended up even writing offers because we're, we, we saw this. this. Mm -hmm. Whereas you go to, uh, you know, San Diego, Ventura County, even parts of NorCal, some of the anti-COVID markets, you're still seeing multiple offers and you're seeing comps that are volatile. But they're still way up from where they were, and they're not trending down uh, heavily, at least. Mm -hmm. I mean, now we're seeing a little bit of a softening in the market. I don't want to see your opinion, too, but we're seeing some softening now where it's not like it was in June or July. But the prices right now are still a little bit higher than where they were at the end of last year. <laughs> so where that's not true in Idaho and Oregon. So I got really nervous about those two yeah. particular markets. Uh, Boise, Post Falls. Even to some extent, I saw it a little bit in Washington, mm -hmm. but not as bad as Oregon. Oregon was was rough. Yeah. But then I went to Austin, Texas, and Austin was booming in the spring. Now everyone's panicking. So it's it's a weird time. Yeah. What I, do you think? What do we what do you say? So I don't have any expertise on the sales side. I definitely sure. am pretty tied in on the rental side in our area. So like what are your seller or your <clears throat> owners saying? How do they feel? People are nervous. Yeah. There's a lot of uncertainty, right? Oh, yeah. So we saw a pretty, pretty significant softening of the rental market end of August, okay. which a lot of people would say, oh, the school's going back. Yeah. It happens every year. Seasonal. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does. But this was it more worse? severe. Yeah, worse. Um, mm -hmm. My personal opinion is all the COVID money cycled through the yep. markets. People aren't as excited about renting for whatever price they can rent for. Um People are, you know, families potentially are contracting, like moving in with parents versus the opposite of what was happening, right? Right. Um, there's unknowns with the economy. Like most people aren't experts in the economy and have the crystal ball. They're it's just insane, like, though. I don't know what's happening. I'm nervous. I'm not doing anything. Yep. I'm not going anywhere. Yep. So we saw a pretty significant increase in days on market. And then we started seeing uh, rent prices, move in concessions, those types of things coming down. And see, how do you handle this when you're comping rentals and the comps are, you know, doing one to two months free rent? Yeah. How, how do you comp this? Because sometimes that doesn't actually show up in the remarks, but you know what's happening or it shows up in the remarks, but you do a rental survey in a market like Phoenix is like famous for this. I mean, I, I look at the Phoenix market and I'm like, oh, starting in January, they're starting to do one, two months rental concessions. And I'm like, okay, well then a $2,400 a month property is yeah. realistically like 2,000 a month. But you do a rental survey and you just do the class, I hate it. I, I ask agents, I'm like, oh, send me the comps. I look at it, they just send me the one-liners. Like the one line of each, mm -hmm. and, and then mm -hmm. it's like, see, the average rent is twenty four hundred. I'm like, come on, this is bullshit. <laughs> like, yeah. let's get the yeah, actual yeah, yeah. data, right? Then you look at the data, it's like rental concession, rental concession, rental. How do you comp? 
I mean, do you, are you just comping against the stuff you're renting and what you're feeling? No, so I don't, I, I would say I don't have the analytical talent that you have, oh, but sorry. we, we comp on our local market knowledge. We yep. absolutely look at what the other properties are doing, but sure. really there's a certain amount of um, feel to it, right? Yeah. Like, and the conversations we have with our clients have changed completely. It's no longer, you know, COVID, you could take a picture of the dirt and put any price you want on it and it would rent in two days. That's not the case. Yeah. Like you have to price them correctly. And the problem in our market is you have a lot of self-managing owners mm -hmm. who don't understand what's happening and they'll put their property up for $5,000 a month when it's really 3,000. But our clients go, look at this house. It's $5,000 a month. Yeah, and it's not renting. <laughs> knowing that there's no way in hell it's going to rent. Yeah. So it's definitely changing. Um, yeah, it's softening. And, 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 and I mean, if it's changing, if it's softening more than it was, you know, in prior years, uh, at some point, those lower rents have to translate to lower prices. But we haven't really seen this massive correction in pricing. What's your take? I mean, that's a million dollar question, right? Like you figure that out. Um, yeah, no kidding. I don't know. I mean, people yeah. say it's not enough supply. Sure, I don't but know. But there are buyers either. Yeah. You know? I don't know. Like, you know what I'm hearing a lot of right now? And I want to see if you're hearing this in management. I'm hearing a lot of agents. And it makes me nervous when they all say this, but they're all saying, relist in spring. Okay, great. Well, what happens when everybody says, I'm going to wait until the spring? Mm hmm. Well, now you have a surge of inventory. Everybody's going to be what do you rushing. What prices to, are going to do? <laughs> prices are going to have to come down. Yeah. Because if rates are still very high in the spring, but all of a sudden inventory, you know, we go from uh, 120 homes on the market in Ventura to, let's say, you know, 2011 style was 400 homes. That's a problem. Yeah. For I sure. mean, who knows? Who knows? Yeah. You know? <laughs> I mean, we market to, or, you know, one of our marketing streams is targeted at realtors, half of them are uh, half. That's maybe an exaggeration. A lot of them don't exist anymore. They're already falling off. Wow. Like, leaving the business. Leaving the business. I mean, I don't know how you could, I mean, if that's how you support your family and the, the, the sales aren't there, like, right. what are you going to do? You got to go do something. So that some of the people that are in our database were taken out because they're no longer in the business. So wow. anyhow, that's scary. What else? What else? House is hacking. Oh, yeah. So you are going to have this is yet another side of your business. So this is just the, a part of the management company, not, not a new business. I guess. Yeah. yeah. That's a, a new feature of the yeah, existing uh, business. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so traditional house hacking, not to be confused with househack.com. <laughs> uh, <laughs> traditional house hacking, you are going to help owners rent out other parts of their homes. This sounds like a nightmare. Yes. <laughs> so. Yeah, so one of the things we believe in our in, in at Rencon is like okay. everyone deserves the opportunity to be financially free, right? Okay. So we found that that wasn't actually true. Like in as you know, the Ventura market very well, like we don't have a lot of people running around buying properties that cash flow right. and buying, you know, multiple properties. This isn't Cleveland, Ohio or, you know, Kansas City, Missouri, right? Yeah. This yeah, is yeah. a high dollar market. We don't have a lot of those intentional investors. No, you around. buy like one or two. Like that's already a lot. Yeah. You know? yeah. So th th it, the whole financial freedom for our clients and our world was pretty much reserved for people that already had assets or bought properties a long time ago. It wasn't really translating to younger generation coming up who are interested. A lot of your course members, people who yeah. are trying to figure this stuff out. Sure. Right. So that didn't sit well with us. We're like, uh, okay, this is our why, but it's only our why for like the top 20% of Ventura, right? right. So that's kind, of, that's kind of BS. What can we do? Well, obviously everybody knows the best way to buy a house in a market like ours is if you're willing to be uncomfortable and house hack. Well, the problem is a lot of people don't like to take action or they're fearful of tenants and managing yep. or, or financing, all the things that you got to do to do that there's a lot of fear wrapped up in. So we were like, we can help these people manage these house hacks. It's not that difficult. Mm. The number one thing is it's a management nightmare. You got a bunch of tenants in a, in a property. It's going to be difficult. They're going to fight. They're going to have issues. Oh, well, and, because you had that with, I'm imagining, I, I should let, let you mention, but you said you bought units in Nashville, Toledo, mm -hmm. Bonner Springs. How was managing units? It's it's probably it's more work, yeah. yeah. And I wasn't self managing, just for the record. Oh, that's right. That's where you hated managers. Yeah, yeah. got it. Oh, okay, okay. That and locally. Um, okay. So yeah. anyway, okay, okay, okay. the the tr the reason why no professional management company wants to do this is because it's 
they're afraid of of the tenant interactions and of having up all these things, right? Well, our business is very organized, very process driven. I'm not afraid of that. Yeah. Even okay. if we brought on another remote worker whose job was to make sure these tenants were happy and deal with the issues. Mm -hmm. That's fine. The reality is though, this is happening with a management company or not, right? Like there yeah, are plenty true. of people who house hack in Ventura yeah. already who do it just fine. Like, is it a little more work? Sure. But with more work is more reward, right? Like if we can get more people to do it, then that's a win for us. And not to mention mm -hmm. we have a new client. We have, you know, all those things that go along with that. But the the part that gets weird for us is when we're going to owner occupy manage a house hack. So the owner buys the house, doesn't want to get involved in like renting out all the rooms and dealing with all the stuff around that. We step in. Now we're in a spot where we have a client who's also kind of a tenant. So it took us a while to work through that with the attorneys and the management contracts and to get it all buttoned up. But we're we're there. We're we are rolling it out as we speak. So we'll see kind of how it goes. How do you make money on that? I mean, if you rent out a room for twelve hundred bucks, you you take you know ten percent. I guess I guess there's a hundred bucks, eh? If you took 10 well, I mean the room. reality. Well, let's just say your three bedroom, two bath house, yeah. like for three thousand bucks, we make yeah. our management fee on it. Well, I we guess. rent it out by the room. Just just solely renting it out by the room, we're gonna make more. You you know, fifteen hundred bucks for the master. 11, 1200 bucks per this room. This is assuming there's no owner in it. I got Assuming it. Okay. there's no owner in got it. Yeah. it. Yeah, 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 that's true. You will always make more dividing it up. Right. Yeah, yes, so yes, that's yes, one yes. aspect okay. of it. The okay. other aspect of it is oh, my contracting company is going to uh -huh. get involved in creating more rooms. Oh, no. <laughs> so, so, so we have a formal living room, formal dining room, yeah, close them or off. a loft or something. I mean, I just did that because we got all these kids coming. We're like, well, we turned the formal dining room into an office. <laughs> then we're looking, we got twins coming. We're like, do we want to move? How about the formal family room? <laughs> we just turned that into another room. We're like, but there's a fireplace that connects through the other side. Box it in. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's funny is I did this in my own house when we had our third kid. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. turned the formal living room into the cri the, the nursery. Right? Exactly. So yeah. now I'm looking Keep at that noise away, man. <laughs> <laughs> looking at my own house, which I'm not going to do this, but yeah, if yeah. I moved out and yeah. wanted to do the strategy I'm talking about, it would produce like over six thousand dollars in rent. Oh, it's insane! It, so, yeah. just taking a three bedroom, two bath and turning it into a four bedroom, two bath, I can now rent that out for mid fives. Okay, so I, I'm, I'm so very the, interested. So, there's more in this. cash flow for the client, is why it's you, enticing for them. That's true. And if they make more money, you get to make more money. Mm -hmm. Whether it's it, you should be charging, I should let you answer this, a higher percentage. So if it's owner occupied, we're charging our standard. If okay. it's non owner occupied, we are charging more. See, you should because it's more work. Oh, of course it so is. So when the owner's there, they can assist with showings and they're the point of contact for maintenance and some of the management duties. They're essentially assisting with just because of the fact that they're there. This is really interesting because you're going into this environment of that COVID money being or expiring, mm -hmm. evaporating. And by, and rent's gone up, you know, 30, 40% over the last four or five mm -hmm. years. By going into house hacking, the traditional sense of house hacking, where you're renting out the individual rooms, I don't think you're ever going to have a shortage anytime soon of tenants. No, there's more demand. Yeah. Because it's, the, ent the entry point is lower. Oh my gosh. So we're charging means... premiums too, because we're, Providing cleaning service. We're providing Wi-Fi. We're wait, 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 wait. What? You're providing cleaning service for the individual rooms? No, for the common areas, which is just us coming into the property. Because the fear of the of our clients is that's a lot of people living in there. They're going to destroy that house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our comeback is we're actually going to be in this house way more than we are in our long-term rentals because we're providing twice a month common area cleanings. So our cleaner is in there taking a look around things like that so that we're kind of using as a hedge against the, some of the concerns with the strategy. But in the end, with softening rental market, and we have a client who bought their house in the last couple of years, and they're going to be negative if they rent it out, this has the potential to push them over the edge. Because if we can show them, hey, we can get you 20 to 40% more rent with this strategy, that might be enough for them to hang on to it versus sell it. So I feel like it's a win-win. Um, we're excited about it. I actually 100% agree that demand for this cohort of tenant is going to skyrocket because I, I think there's still, and we know this, I mean, there's fact around this too, but 
I think people still have this this higher feeling of net worth because of all this, the COVID spending, mm -hmm. but it's tapering, you know, whether it's the market or it's just spending or whatever. And the I think there's a very good chance you, you end up seeing way more people going back into these shared living environments compared to renting their own property, mm -hmm. just because everything around us has gotten so much more expensive. Even if inflation goes to zero today, things are still 30 to 40% more expensive than they were in 2019. So now you have more demand for these properties. Uh, you can help owners make more money because they're going to make more money renting out the rooms. The question is the management intensity, but you're actually solving for the management intensity by basically living there yourself with your your vendors, right? Your vendors are there mm -hmm. because you're sending in your cleaning service twice a week, once a week? Twice a month, I think. Is what twice a month, okay. At, yeah. So your cleaning service is going in every two weeks. Uh, then, you know, who knows, maybe a handy person or whatever comes in once a month. So you have three site visits potentially a month on average is what I would guess. Maybe even four, three to four site visits a month. Uh, and how do you how are you going to handle this potential screening like how do you how do you go and say oh i need a 700 credit score on somebody who's renting a room like do you lower your standard what yeah happens? so right now we we have a sliding scale of what our requirements are based on the rent price so if you rent a six thousand dollar house your credit and all your things have to be better than if you're renting a two thousand dollar studio right Makes sense so it could be something similar along those lines what's your suspicion like are you just going to kill credit no, I mean we'll have a standard, but my it will be lower. Okay, for sure. So the reality is too is, well, go ahead. I'll let you finish. Five hundred. No, 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 no. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Our lowest right now, absolute lowest, is six forty. Okay. Oh, that's so, like FHA. Uh, yeah, you know, maybe, I could see maybe a little bit lower than that or something. Really? I, I okay. I haven't like worked it all no, out. No, no, that's There fine. are two. There are. You heard of pad split? Uh. Uh. Padsplit is a, a venture-backed company that's doing this in other market, not in our market. But their argument is, they I don't know if they disregard credit completely, but it's less of a factor in their criteria. And they have like, I think, a 97% collection rate or something. I don't know how accurate their data is. But the argument is made that it doesn't matter as much. Not to mention, th with the political environment we have in California, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if credit score as a requirement goes away completely. Um, hopefully we're, that doesn't happen, but it wouldn't surprise me. It would create certainly some more challenges. I wonder if, if, because what I'm seeing in some of the markets where they've gotten rid of credit scores is they still allow you to run a credit report, which that's actually what I care about more is I want to see the history. Are you paying your freaking bone bill? You know, or yeah. like stuff like I want, I want to see that payment history, but if they completely disallow that, I guess what you'd have to do then is. Send me your last 12 uh, statements for your uh, yeah. phone bills and stuff like that, you know? <clears throat> the other piece of this that's good for the client hmm. is we now have a single family house that is uh, that is performing more like a multifamily unit. Yes. So you're not going to have the turnover where you don't collect rent for a month and you have $5,000 to get it ready to rent. Hmm. That's not going to happen because not everybody's going to move out at the same time. You're going to have one turnover, which the worst case scenario out of a room is you replace the carpet and paint the walls, right? Like not anything compared to you have to do that for the whole house. So it's going to stabilize the cash flow for the client, which Do you think you'll good. have more evictions? I don't know. Yeah, that I think as long as we follow our screening criteria that we're going to be in good shape. Like, I mean, if I look at our eviction record right now mm -hmm. in the in the last. 10 years people we've evicted because people that we've placed right i think four. Oh, that's nothing so we've evicted yeah. many more people but they're people that bring problems well, to yeah. us and that's not your it's eviction. not our, pro no, not that our problem your record yeah yeah so yeah. i mean like i've never had a an eviction on any tenant that we've ever placed but my first real estate deal ever first deal ever Here's six units, 309 East Thompson Boulevard. <laughs> uh, oh, please don't evict us. The fair is coming up and everybody loves the fair. Those people had every excuse under the sun not to get evicted. And they were so toxic for that entire building. I couldn't sell that building for 11 months because of them. <laughs> yeah. So oh, evictions suck, man. Yeah. It makes the whole building smell. It sucks. <laughs> Literally, too, in that case. Uh, anyway, so this is really interesting. So... Have okay. Have have you done this room renting before? No, we're rolling it out. Oh. So we've had. I've Are had, you scared? I mean, this is no, not at all. Really? Yeah, no. I've analyzed this every which way from Sunday. I've worked with our attorneys. I've talked to 
there's this is very similar to student housing. It's yes, not, it, that is basically it, what it, it's it is. It's not yeah. that much different. Yeah. And I have a colleague or two that Which do that's, that do student housing on a regular basis. That's insanely intense. What do you mean, colleague? Other management company owners in other areas. Yeah. Okay. So I network pretty well with people like me across okay. the country. Okay, good. Um, Smart. Yeah. So basically, the people because I've posted this in some of the groups I belong in, gotten a lot of hate. You're out of your mind. It's going to be too hard. And then the people that come to me like behind the scenes are like, yeah, don't worry about any of that. I'll show you how I do it. It's not that big of a deal. So uh, the way our software set moat. up, the what's that? It's a moat. When other people are like, that's too hard. Don't which do it. Which is an opportunity. It's which an is opportunity. Like, yeah, it's, sure. it's insulation for you. Yes, you're right. It's too hard. You know, it's kind of like. You're right. California sucks. Do not move to Ventura. It's a horrible place to live. <laughs> and then we're like, this place is freaking awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Uh, so, wow. That is really interesting. So, so you're not like the Eminem song. I'm not afraid. You're, you're, you're just going to go all in. I mean, this. there's going to be challenges for sure. What but do your attorneys say about this? Is it legal to just chop them up? So there are some regulations. Well, when you say chop them up, what do you mean? Like Add more rooms. Yes, but only with permits, right? They have to fire cut, like there has to be a window, there has to be an exit, all those things. Like we're not talking about doing this without permits. I'm not going so out like on if, that line. But I mean, if you just pull up a wall and there's already a window, do you really need a permit? So the reason I want the permit yeah. is for a couple things. Yeah. One, just the CYA, but two, I want the public record to change. So if this owner, our client in the future, refinances, sells, reappraises it, now instead of a three bedroom, it's a four bedroom. But you're not getting paid at all for that work oh. that you're doing that like to, oh no we absolutely are getting paid the, the, to my, pull the permit well my contracting company yeah we yeah. we line item everything i guess i guess my like i'm, I'm just thinking uh, try have you pulled any permits yet for your clients yeah uh, well for the contracting side sure okay yeah okay how do you deal with the uh you know oh here comes the inspector and you're pulling an inspection for you know smoke detectors carbon monoxide uh bedroom ceiling fan and there's the egress, right? Now we put the door in, we put the non non bearing retaining wall, or the wall in, whatever. How do you deal with the inspector? Hmm, new windows. We'll need a permit for that. Oh, look at that new water heater. We'll get one for that. Oh, you guys uh, have an addition here from the '70s. You know, I don't see that on the record yeah, here. Let's yeah. get a permit. How do you deal with that? I mean, I will say this: this happened to us on our last project. What are you going to get to, man? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a big deal. Well, you got to was... tear down additions sometimes. Yeah, well, in this case, it was the 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 inspector was didn't have it figured out because he's like, yeah, that's not permanent. I looked, send my people over to the office. Hey, this is what they said. The person behind the desk, oh, actually, that was permitted in 1955. Okay. Here's the permit. So you got lucky you're on good. that one. Got lucky on that but one. But you're gonna get sent to that office there's, all the time. There's risk here, and like if if we well, one, I don't actually manage properties if there's like known unpermitted structures. No, that makes sense. But I'm, I'm thinking like, do you need a permit for a, a, a non-load bearing wall? I don't think you do, but if yeah. you're going to put like electrical in I or... Guess, yeah, you put a new outlet on there or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And I, that's not an expensive permit. I guess what you're saying is, look, if you have, like, if you have a 2002 home with no funky additions, what are you afraid of? Like, pull the permit. It's it's going to be like 80 bucks for an electrical permit in the drywall uh, and the wall, big deal. And it's a CYA for it the is. owner okay. and for us. Like, I don't want right. to get involved hmm. in renting out something that's unpermitted if for some reason it was required, right? Hmm. But the regulation that does apply here is the cities have certain rules against like boarding houses, which is what some of them look at this as. Okay, so tell so us about So for that. example, Camarillo doesn't allow boarding houses. So in oh. theory, you, we shouldn't be doing this in Camarillo, which, you know, I don't anticipate having an issue, yeah. but there are some cities that expressly prohibit this in their codes, which are antiquated, And but that's a whole nother conversation. But. And those might loosen a lot in this sort of uh, environment that we're, we're uh, in where affordability is a big it's issue. It's a huge issue. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's really so. fascinating. So, okay. And I guess that makes sense because you don't want even insurance issues in the future either uh, with uh, not yeah. having permits. For me, it's a, like a liability. Like it, you did yeah. un, you did unpermitted work on my property and now XYZ happened. This is your fault. Yeah. And a lot of <clears throat> rental renovation stuff doesn't require permits. Like I, I've, I've gone to the city before. I'm like, look, we're just replacing the ceiling fans and light fixtures and the faucets in the same location. They're like, don't even bother. Yeah. Which technically via the book, are, are you supposed to? Maybe. But when the people at the counter or, or the inspectors are like, don't worry about it. 
uh, that's great. But uh, but that is interesting. You're right. I mean, really, how hard is it to permit stringing up a wall? Yeah, if I mean, no if, if we're in and we're not, and if if we see a house that's like obviously had 15 additions to it since the 1905 or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Probably not going to recommend that strategy to them, or we're going to have the conversation like, "This is the risk here." Yes. Are you comfortable doing this? Because interesting. Anyhow, so uh, where else have you seen these? What other room rental restrictions have you seen? So, as far as when we were doing our research, yeah. that boarding house thing is the main one. That was it. Yeah. the The city of Oxnard, which isn't necessarily against rent by the room, their rent control just cause measure is by the door that's rented. So okay. in theory, these for sure are going to be covered under their rent control law. Yeah, but those are not that hard because like we're like that's usually like what they're trying to protect against is a homeowner moving in and trying to like remodel the whole building. Yeah, it's not going to stop the strategy. It's yeah, just a, that doesn't it's change just a consideration, I okay. guess. But as far as people saying no, you can't do this, the only one I'm aware of is these boarding house regulations that's really interesting okay okay yeah and, and i mean that's easy to find out you just walk into the city oh, yeah. restrictions well, we, already, we talk to every city in ventura county and any city you invest in you should go talk to the city it's even just to yeah. shake their hands it's yeah. a great idea okay wow that's really interesting um wow uh i never thought that a property manager <laughs> would desire to do what you just said <laughs> but the problem with this is you're not just any property manager you're like the property manager I respect and like love and admire. So like I'm like, this is this is like a mind twist. Like I I'm gonna have to tell I'm gonna tell Lauren about this. She's like, what? <laughs> they got to Peter? <laughs> well, the reality is most managed companies suck, right? Yes. For lack of a better term. That's terrible. why we're like, what? <laughs> the, and I have my own theory on why they suck, but yeah. well, tell us about that. So our the business is structured in a way that breeds apathy. So like yeah. You come to me, you go, hey, I want you to rent my house out. Okay, okay, I'll rent your house out. I control the money. I control when I get paid. The only recourse you have against me is you can fire me or you can like file a complaint with the DRE. That's it. So if I have 2,000 properties that I control when I get paid, I don't really care if you fire me or you, you're unhappy because I have 1,999 others that, that do. It's yeah. backwards. If it flipped and it was like you as the client have to pay me each month and I have to invoice you, it would change the industry completely because all of a sudden I would have to really work hard for you to pay me. Oh, yeah. And you wouldn't pay me if I did a terrible job or I screwed up a maintenance thing or I overcharged you or let your tenants not renew their lease or made whatever it is, right? Huh. That, that's, I think, one of the reasons it's so bad. The other reason is property management at scale is incredibly... It's simple yet complex. Yeah. Because if you manage one property on your own, easy. You could do that in your sleep. Yeah. You manage a thousand the exact same way. You need process. You need structure. Yep. You need people. You need technology. You need all of those things. And that is where a lot of people get into trouble. Like, of course. Because most property management companies were born from realtors uh -huh. in the sales world. Who are who kept yeah. getting asked by their clients, "Hey, manage my property. Sure, I'll hey, just do it for property. you." Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then all of a sudden, they find themselves with a portfolio. They don't care about property management. They're viewing oh. it as a loss leader to keep those clients. Yep. In essence, though, they have a train wreck dumpster fire going on in this management <laughs> company that every that has a terrible reputation. That's where most management companies across the country came from. Wow. So there are like a new breed of people who are looking at it differently. Who I consider myself one of those people who are treating it like a business, who I don't come from selling real estate. Sure. Like I don't come from any of that. So yeah. I don't come with some of those preconceived ideas. The other one being you're a, you are a sale, a real estate salesperson. You get paid your commission check right. one time. That's right. it. Yeah. That's not how property management works, Recurring but rev, that's how yeah. everybody feels about it. Uh, I charge one fee. I charge my management fee. That's my commission. And I do everything else as a result of that. There's no other service industry that does that. Like, try to go talk to your attorney and see if he'll charge you one thing and do everything else for you. Go right. talk to your CPA. Go All of them. Nobody does that. If you have me working for you, I'm charging you, usually mm. by the hour. Property management's not like that. That's really interesting. So, uh, so you went from fighting fires in houses to fighting fires in houses. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I the, the business is... It's pleasant. It's not as bad. Oh, come on. As, it's not. And I'll say this too. 
we don't have tenants beating our door down angry at us. Does it happen occasionally? Sure. But mm. like, go, you go look at our reviews. Half of them are from tenants who That's are crazy. happy with us. I know. That's right? it's amazing. It's because you guys kill it. Because I, we treat them well. Yeah. Like they're no different. Wow. They, they're people. They just need a good place to stay. need or a question yeah. or it's not that and hard. They're our customer. We take care of them. Oh. And honestly, I do that because it's the right thing to do. But the yeah. other reason we do it is because it's in the best interest of our client. Well, of course. Because a happy tenant takes care of the property, exactly. pays the rent, all the things that yeah. our clients want. Uh, the the so. a tenant getting evicted, you know, walks around with a hammer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, that, okay. Practically, how are you divvying up uh, these these rooms? Are you, uh, are you putting in like garage doors with deadbolts between each no, room? No, so or? we're putting smart locks on the on the on the entrance and exit doors so we can change the code uh, as soon as somebody moves out or whatever right and like can you do these remotely hopefully yes. okay. yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. so if once we take the property on we change out the hardware on the entrances and the exits right, right. And then we are the rooms are going to be keyed, which okay. in our traditional management we don't key rooms. Yeah, that's yeah, a, exactly. That's a disaster. Yeah, but not the case in this. So they'll be keyed. So like a regular key handle lock or deadbolt lock. I don't know that we've gotten that detailed. T TBD. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. But we. Use what do you the, suspect? I would suspect just a handle, but I don't know. Yeah. We'll see what the, we'll see what the what tenants want. want. Yeah. Solid corridor or hollow. I think I would be more comfortable with a solid core door, but yeah. I, we have we didn't anticipate changing all the doors out either. Yeah, and I know, honestly, I thing. don't think like yeah. if you go rent a room, I don't think that people are putting solid core doors on them. Yeah, 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 with a it's, threshold and a lock, you know. Yeah, but I mean, up. something to consider. But mm. um, the turnovers on these things, I think, are going to be relatively easy because we're not inspecting the common areas. Yeah, we're not doing the only thing we're over there doing is paint looking carpet. in the room, maybe paint carpet. Yeah, are you doing carpet? Change the lock. I hate carpet and rentals, but, but it are you going to do it in these? <laughs> well, I mean, it depends. Ultimately, yeah. it's what's in the property. And yeah. it, when we change floors, I almost always try to... LVP or something. Yeah. yeah. So... That makes sense. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. Wow. This is really interesting. Uh, wow. This is... I have to say, when you first said it, I hated it, the idea. <laughs> like an hour and 12 minutes ago, as I'm grabbing my cup of coffee and, and you said, oh, by the way, I got to tell you about this idea. I'm like, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> but now I'm kind of like, wow. Well, okay. He, here's the other thing. The biggest argument against it is the tenant management. Headaches. Yeah. We manage, we manage hundreds of tenants already. <laughs> that we already are dealing with the same <laughs> headaches, right? You could argue you're going to have denser properties, but we're already dealing with tenant headaches. And mm. frankly, we're good at it. It's not that big of a deal. That's fascinating. Yeah, because now, wow, uh, like you say, it's more cash flow. It's a higher rate that you're charging. It's more money that the client is making. It uh, is economically the perfect time to be doing this because like during COVID, everybody wanted their own place. It would be a horrible time to do it. Now it's like everybody's like, okay, COVID, whatever. Like I need to save money. I need to survive. Yep. Wow. And so common Wi-Fi. So th the reason we're going to charge a little bit above market rate rents. Um, like, All utilities you included. I don't want to do that. I don't want to okay. include the utilities. I want to do a flat rate for the utilities. We also have the opportunity to do that ratio utility billing system, but I see that being like an administrative nightmare for us. Oh, because it's a headache. How do you account for that? <clears throat> but flat a flat utilities. fee, like, hey, for you know, $50 a month includes all the utilities. We do the cleaning, Wi-Fi. We, the kitchen will be like stocked with the basic essentials. There'll be furniture in the common areas. So there's a little bit of upfront cost for wow. the client. Kind of like an in-between short-term and long-term thing. But uh, I think if if you came to me and presented this to me, I would do it in a heartbeat. The main reason is the har the hard people that are going to have the hardest time with this are the people that are emotionally connected to their properties. The people who are like, no, this is no different than a stock in my 401k. I just want it to produce a return. They're going to say yes to this all day long. It's the people that are emotionally connected that are going to be the ones that struggle with, well, you know, Johnny grew up in that room. And if yeah. they put a hole in the wall, it's going to be a problem, you know, type of Where thing. is this going to succeed the most? Does this succeed the most in like SoCal or do you just do it in every market or would you do this in Texas and Ohio? Well, one, I don't have any point of reference for that stuff. I only where you we're used at. to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, yes. true. But I will say yeah. there's two companies that do this, Pad Split and Homeroom, and Home they room. do it. All over the, the, the this is I was reading something on one of their websites. This exact 
objection and they're like no it's basically works in every market we've ever been in wow so i mean if you think about it there's young people that want to move out of their house and it's all they can afford and they go rent a room somewhere i mean my nieces did it, it it's super common this is amazing what am i missing i don't think you're missing anything this is so really what you're cool. missing is helping me promote the house hack meetup because we're yes. trying to get the word out okay uh it's Last Thursday, every other month. So November 30th at Topa Topa at 6 o'clock, the one on uh, Knoll Drive. See, I got, I got to put this on the calendar. Hold yeah, on, yeah. if you show up, oh, that'd be awesome. You could help us bring some more people in. Uh, oh, hold on. This is November... 30th. Okay, okay. 6 Nothing's o'clock. Nothing's on the calendar right now. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, okay, uh, this is the Topa Topa Brewery. Yep, on Knoll Drive, because they have, they have, I think, two in Ventura. Okay, and this will be the... Uh, uh, Peter's Ria. Is it yours or you partner with it or like who who runs it? No, we do. So yeah. Rincon. Yeah. We call it the House Hack Co-op. Wow. And it's only we've only had, I think, three, and it's pretty okay. small. And what time? Six o'clock. Is this uh so is this where like all the landlords get together with it, smoke cigars? No, and... yeah, no, no. no. <laughs> and who we're targeting are the people who are having a hard time buying a house because yeah. it's expensive. Right. And educating them on an alternate way on how they can get it done. Do you know that, uh, I, I, well, I'm pretty sure of this. I think FHA is now, or Fannie, one of them, maybe both, are now including Borders Income. I did not know qualifying. that. For qualifying. Oh, really? Borders Income. Oh, here it is. Which Bord is exactly what we're talking about, right? Exactly. Uh, borders Income, Fannie Mae. Listen to this. This is crazy. So, oh, there's a PDF guide, last updated October 4th. How lucky are we? Uh, this is really interesting. So uh, I'll have to send this to you. But... Um, Borders income, yeah, there it is. Borders income, income from borders in the borrower's principal residence or second home, uh, what is this? Uh, okay, is not considered acceptable with the exception of the following. When a borrower, uh, what is this? When a borrower, oh, did they change this? Maybe that's not as good. This is when a borrower with disabilities receives. Uh, okay, that's different. That's a lot more. I'm glad I looked because I thought this was a lot more broad. That's not as good anymore. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> All right. It's a disability thing. Yeah, I don't know where I heard. Somebody was saying, you know, maybe what happened was they were thinking about bringing it out to everyone mm. and they just ended up highlighting it with that. So never mind on the borders income. It's just if there's a borrower <laughs> with a disability. Rip. So anyway, um, <clears throat> sorry. It's all good. All <laughs> now good. we know that one's I getting, dead. I was getting excited. About I was that, getting excited too. Be, it's going like, to be easier to convince people. Yeah. What's your opinion on this? And you probably are super close to this issue. You have a ton of people in your courses. Wh why do people struggle with taking action? Like what have you found oh. to get people to just do something? Like well, you know, first of all, it's it, like every single day, it's it, especially when, when you're, you're trying to find that purpose, it's actually really hard to work on finding that purpose. Uh, this is just like a, a human nature thing. Just like, I, you know, I hate my job. I hate school. I don't know what I want to do. Anytime there's uncertainty, the default is screw it, man. I'm just going to have a beer and play video games because there's comfort in that, right? Mm -hmm. Like everybody mm -hmm. goes through that. That's very normal. It's like, I don't want to wake up, man. Stocks are down. My job's shit. You know, like whatever. Like that's like human nature. So how to break out of that is really difficult. And I think that's why we have depression problems it's, mm -hmm. it's depressing but i think that's why that exists it's difficult because you have to have like some kind of belief that you can contribute extremely meaningfully to something that gives you fulfillment and it's not it's not only money like it has to be i succeeded at something i got a promotion on my job i created a business that's why we have that entrepreneurial bug it's because you get to see it build and then you you get high off of that idea of I built this property management company. Now I'm going to build the contracting team. You know the handyman team. Mm -hmm. Like let's go. This is great. Now we're gonna expand to this, 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 this. That's that creates happiness more than the actual money. I mm -hmm. believe. Like that's what For keeps sure. me going. Right. For sure. People are like, oh Kevin, like what number are you gonna retire? Like I, it's not about the number. It's about building stuff. It's like what's the next thing I can do? But but how do you help somebody build something when they haven't built anything? I think, like you said, one of the first greatest things is owning your own home and then maybe rent out those rooms. Like you're saying, get a taste of property management, get a taste of owning. Uh, how do you start with that? Well, the easiest way to start owning your own home is having a job, but nobody wants to hear that. 
You know, the W-2 is so villainized. The job is so villainized on social media. You know, people go on social media like, that's right. <laughs> Screw having a boss. But then you stay miserable. Whereas you have a job like you did. You were a firefighter. You worked really hard at that. You took your income, which let you build your side hustles and invest in real estate. Now you were able to get rid of your W-2 job and just keep developing those. That's hard. What we yeah. just described. That's not easy. <laughs> okay, that's hard. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I, and that's what I struggle with. Like, I, even the people on my own team yeah. who I'm trying to like guide down this path. Yeah. I, cause it's not a matter of them not understanding, like, for example, buying a house. Like, sure. It's not a matter that they don't understand it. Yeah. It's just that they can't get it over it. Yeah. They can't get themselves over the hump. And I struggle with like, how am I going to get the, this, these people to go over the hump? Like, I can't, like, I don't know what else to do. And it's, it's, it's that way for everybody. It's well, like a system problem. And because it's so systemic, as you're saying, everyone around says, oh, don't do that. Right. So like I, when I had my real estate license in 2010, I go to Trader Joe's and the people at Trader Joe's are like, oh, you're a realtor. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, it's like, bro, you're working at Trader Joe's. No! You know? And they're like, I'm sorry, you're a realtor. I'm like, because it was a bad time. You go to buy your first house. And, and I mean, call after call after call. It's like the underwriter is mad about this. Or here's another one. I'm the flooring contractor. Your house has asbestos. And then it's like a new buyer. Like, oh, 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 maybe this is it for me. Yeah. It's hard, man. Oh, the market's going to crash. Double dip recession. You know, it's like, yeah. Yeah. It's tough, man. It is hard. And then, uh, then part of me is like, okay, well, maybe not everybody's meant to do make progress and and take action and do these things, like which is kind of a pessimistic way to look at it. It but. is, but but you know what? Like on the other, on the flip side, I I look at uh, uh, like I think to myself in this alternate world, if I could have the simplest, most stress free life, what would that look like? And it would probably look like you know. Working Monday through Thursday, nine to five at a job that gave me some fulfillment. And then the rest of the time I could go to my kids soccer practice, hang out with the kids, family, go on vacations, get time off. Right. Mm -hmm. And that is like basically a government job. Right. So to an entrepreneur, that sounds horrible. But like for if you want the least amount of stress and you're not worried about that fulfillment ride. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Well, That's we a need, great we, way to go. We need people like that too. Right? Of course. And like in an alternate reality, I wish I didn't have, like, I almost think it's a curse. It this, is a curse. This, <laughs> this, like, I need to do all this crap, right? Like, I wish I didn't have that feeling. I wish I could just be happy working 36 hours a week. I get that from my circle of like, why would you do that? Yeah. Like, why are you doing that? <laughs> I why can't would you not. open up another one? And to me, it's, <laughs> it isn't about the money. It's yeah. about doing it and building and all that stuff you're talking about. Yeah, for sure. Peter, shout out your business. Uh, Rincon Property Management in Ventura, California. Best property manager ever. And you have a real estate meetup on November 30th at the Topa Topa Brewery in, uh, it's it's on Dole, so it's in, in Ventura, California. Yep, in Ventura. Uh, that's over by the dump, but no. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> uh, how can people follow you? Uh, I'm not personally big on social media, but Rencon is. So Instagram, okay. Facebook, all those things. Rencon Property Management. Yep. Amazing. Thank you so much. Hey, thanks for having me. It's been fun. Appreciate it.